Hello and welcome. My name is Dylan, and today is going to be a full combat guide on the Solo Legend Operation Seraph's Shield. Now, I'm not going to be including all of the different puzzles and stuff because I'm assuming if you're now doing it on Legend that you've already run it. And I already have a full guide walking through all of the puzzles, which I will link on screen now. What I am going to do is focus on the three main combat encounters and also the spacewalk. The encounters will be split into three brigs spacewalk, boss 1.5, and then boss 2 or final boss section. There will be timestamps for those specific sections down below, so feel free to skip to those if you guys do need them. So the three brig encounter or boss fight one. Now I highly recommend for this encounter that you use something that is good for ad clear. So my recommendations for weapons, obviously two S tier recommendations, are the Osteo Striga SMG, which uses poison damage when you get um, kills or you get precision hits on targets. It spreads poison to other targets. And then the Wither Horde Exotic Grenade Launcher, which you could just shoot at your feet and it will take out all of the enemies charging you. And when there's no enemies close on you, you can just use it on the boss. And it also, if you get the Catalyst, it also has auto-loading holster, so you can use that in combination with an auto-loading rocket very effectively. Now, for this slot here, I recommend using a rocket with auto-loading. Uh, you can use any other power weapons that you enjoy, but I just rockets with auto-loading holster um, are very effective for this type of strategy that we're doing, playing cover, and it allows you to use your exotic slot in a different area. Now, when it comes to ad clear, if you don't have these two weapons, the Osteostriga and the Wither Horde, I would recommend using something like a wave frame grenade launcher because you can shoot that at your feet and all of the enemies in front of you will either get heavily damaged or just die. Or something like incandescent, which will spread, you know, burn damage, scorch to a bunch of different enemies when you kill enemies with it. And then another option here is Volt Shot, which does the same kind of thing for Arc, except it spreads Jolt to enemies uh, after you kill an enemy and reload. So obviously Incandescent is a little bit better because you don't have to reload. But if you use Volt Shot in combination with, you know, Arc Supers, you can do that very well. You can use Incandescent in combination with Solar Supers, or you can just use it on its own. For a special weapon, honestly, whatever kind of special weapon works for you and the build that you're going for. There's like 14 billion different DLCs in Destiny. I have no idea what DLCs you guys have or what weapons you have access to. I'm just speaking in generalities here. And just get something that's good for ad clear and you're comfortable with for the enemies that are going to rush you. And then, you know, something on, on other types of weapons that you can use for boss damage um, to just work on the main boss and the three brigs when they do spawn. As for your super or which particular class you should play, that is completely up to you and what you're comfortable with. I like the Void Titan because it, it gives me Void Overshields. And the way that I do it with my build, I build around getting my abilities faster. All of my different armor pieces here um, use different abilities to reduce the cooldown of my other abilities so I constantly have my abilities up so I can constantly take advantage of my vortex grenades and you know my shield throws and my titan barricade. Now whatever build you are using I'm just providing spots that we can all use for every build and with most different weapon types to give you guys you know just a base to work from and you can kind of feel out what is comfortable for you and make additions or slight changes if you need to. Focus the boss in the middle using this as cover. Once you get that boss down, focus the middle brig as quickly as you can to destroy that brig and give yourself some breathing room so you can more effectively use the cover in this area. Now, you need to be aware here that there are sniper shanks that will be in these different sections. Now, depending on what weapon you use, just use the cover and just take shots at the sniper shanks. Then we're going to focus the brig on the left-hand side. We're going to get that brig down to zero. Once we eliminate that brig, we're going to rotate over here. We're going to pick up some more ammo if we need it. If we have to come before them, then we can. But, you know, try to utilize as much of your abilities, ammo, super, and everything as much as you can. So that you have full ammo for the last brig. And then with the last brig, there's going to be a lot of enemies in this front section here. Some over here and some on the far side there. 
So we're get, then going to play this cover I mentioned earlier. Again, being aware that this is not cover. So you need to stand on the other sides of this as you can get shot through the middle here. So we're going to play these boxes. If the brig or the enemies start to push up too far, you can push back to these boxes here. And this is actually a pretty effective cover spot right in this section here. If you just need to regenerate, you can put down a rift, you can put down a barrier here. Or you can go through and use your invis and just sit here for a second and regen your health. And if we need to, or if we get rid of a bunch of these trash mobs, depending on which weapons you have and how confident you are that you can destroy these guys without um, taking too much damage or unnecessary risk, then you can push up to these boxes here and we can fight the brig from a little bit closer range here as he should be around this section or back over in this corner over here. So that is my, you know, overview, my talk through of this encounter. So I'm going to complete the encounter now and show you guys everything that I just mentioned.
So that is the encounter. So you saw there that I didn't actually end up hitting this ammo box until the end because I didn't need it to destroy the um, bosses that were up. Um, I did take a little bit longer on this right-hand side than I should have, and that caused the boss to kind of go berserk mode. So once you get off their outer shell, then they do have like a soft spot in the middle that you can shoot to do a ton more damage, but they'll also mostly be floating in the air, and they'll be targeting you with these kind of rocket launcher attacks that can do a lot of damage if you don't watch out for them. Now, generally speaking, they'll put a big circle on the ground. You have to stay outside of that. But for the most part, whenever you see them, you can just hide and play different angles if you need to. Oh, crap. Something that I completely forgot um, is back in the other room. Once you've killed the boss, there will generally speaking be a bunch of ammo bricks lying around. So what you want to do is then swap to your long range setup that we're going to use for the spacewalk section. So I'm going to use the Arbalist here. You could use um, a Arc Sniper or something like that. Or you can use an Arc um, Bow, an Arc Scout Rifle, or again, an Arc Sniper. So I'm just going to use the Arbalist and I'm going to use an Arc Scout here. Now, I'm also just going to keep my launcher on, but you could swap to some kind of an Arc Heavy Weapon if you wanted to as well. The reason for arc is that there are um, knights out there with arc shields. So it just allows you to kill them easier. The reason we're using a scout rifle, a bow, or a sniper, or some kind of linear fusion, is because there are sniper enemies that we want to kill from a distance before they can target us. And we're tossing this stuff on back in the boss room before I forgot um, so that you can go around and pick up ammo so that you can get, you know, max special for your sniper or your fusion. Now, just a little bonus here before we get into the spacewalk. This section here where you give up your weapons, you surrender, and then you take your weapons back. Don't forget that there is a big enemy, an elite right here, and he is a void shield. So we need to use our void weapons and we need to go through and try not to use, you know, ammo that you're going to need outside. I've done this a bunch of times. I don't need my rocket. So I'm just going to use a couple of rockets on this guy and take him out. But you could use your super or something if you needed to, to take him out. Or you can use your super in this section here to take out all of these enemies. Now, I generally just do this with my scout and my abilities so that I save any special ammo that I find for the outdoor section. And if you're using something like a linear or an arc um, heavy weapon, then you want to make sure you save that ammo. I don't really need my rockets, so I'm just going to use it to help me clear this section here. Okay, so for this section here, we're going to play it as slow as possible outside, and we're going to see if we can start to damage these knights all the way from over here simply because then we don't have to deal with the knights and all of the uh, snipers that are going to spawn. So even if this takes a little bit of extra time here, we can just go through and just chip away at these knights. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to get rid of these here on the platform. Now, when we jump across to this platform here, now something very quickly that I did forget is that if we look to our right here, if you get in a situation where you walk up too far, they start shooting you, you forgot to kill the knights, whatever, your best thing that you're going to be able to do here, the only cover that you have is to run up this here. This is fine. It's like glass or whatever. You can run up this here and you can hide in this section here and hopefully regen your health. If you have a rift, you should be able to put it down. And if you have a barrier, you can use it here and this little spot here, and you can play this for cover. This is the only cover that you have available in this section. But we're just going to immediately shoot these shanks as soon as we can. And I assure you, if you don't have a long range weapon, it's going to be very, very difficult, and this part is gonna suck. And then if you run up here, these knights will just immediately start blasting, so. We're actually gonna go over here to the left because if we do this, then we get an angle over here and we can kind of get some cover from these shanks. But let's go through and take out these guys because they are long range. And then we will deal with the knight himself. OK, 
Okay, and the knight is taken care of. Now we can just headshot this guy a few times. When we shoot these, we'll shoot this one, we'll shoot this one. We have to be aware of these exploder shanks over on the left-hand side over here. Perfect. We dealt with those pretty easily. I don't see any more visible enemies. Let's go through and shoot that. And now we just do our best to jump across here without dying. All right, so it turns out that there's a couple of shanks up here that are going to ambush you. But if you get up here and you shoot them right away, then you should be okay as long as you have a scout rifle or a sniper or something. We're now going to swap back to our like ad clear setup and our boss damage setup. So for me, I'm going to pull back out my Osteostriga because there are a lot more close range encounters here. I am going to use my grenade launcher and then I'll swap to a sniper for the boss fight. But I'm also just going to use my rocket launcher with auto loading holster as well. So as soon as you go through the these doors here, the encounter does start. So make sure that you swap your weapons and that you hit this ammo crate here to get max ammo in all of your weapons. So for this one here, uh, your class abilities and the things that you have are going to kind of dictate how you play here. I play around my barricade because I'm a titan. If you are a warlock, then you'll be playing around your rift and the cover of the pillars. And if you're a hunter, then you'll be playing around whatever mechanics you have, whether that be invisibility, whether that be the playing with knives from the solar, um, whether that is, you know, a healing nade from solar or some of the arc stuff. I don't know too much about the um, arc uh, hunters, but you'll be playing cover. You'll be playing maybe invisibility around these pillars. So the main boss will spawn. And for the most part, he kind of stays away from you and tries to damage you from afar. And there are a ton of minions that spawn too. However, he will slowly work his way towards you. And at one point, he may actually sprint towards you. At which point, you will obviously need to run away to a different part of the room. And play one of the four pillars for cover. Now, for the regular adds, I think they are orange bar enemies. So they're not like, they're, they're not pushovers, but they're not anything crazy. Uh, you're just going to use your ad clear weapons on them. And we're going to play around our super and our class abilities here as best we can. Again, while using the four pillars. So these are the four pillars that I'm talking about. You can play them close down here if you need to, to play different angles and take out some of the different enemies. So we can see that the boss is over here pushing me a little bit. Now he's backing up. I'm just going to focus some of this ad clear. He's going to push around the side, so I'm going to push to the other side of the room here. I managed to get all of the um, little adds together in the middle and was able to take them out with my ad clear weapon and a nade. So now before the next wave of those little guys spawn, I do have an opportunity here to damage the boss. So I am going to take that opportunity, use my heavy, and spam him out with my um, poison rounds here. Be careful of that nade as it does hurt. We're going to go through. He's going to use his barricade. We're going to hit him with some more poison rounds to get the poison tick damage going. We'll go to cover here and we can fight these new enemies as they spawn in to get control of our little section. We saw that three enemies just spawned in on that section. 
and they keep spawning in on the same spot for some reason. Can throw my nade in the middle again. Again, if I'm if it's getting a little too crazy, I can use my super to stay alive. We're just using the add clear weapon here to get rid of all of these enemies. We're going to focus on some boss damage for a second here. We're going to try to get our poison damage on him again. If you had something like a wither, you could focus on the wither as well. You can see that he is full sprinting at me here. So we're just going to run away. And eventually he does stop after the full sprint for a second. Now he's full sprinting at me again. Just going to do some more damage to him. It does look like only one secondary group of enemies spawned there for me. I've never had it take longer than two secondary, like two groups of the, um, you know, trash ads to spawn. So hopefully you guys don't make it to a third. Hopefully you guys take them out in that section there. But as you can see, I didn't need to specifically play these pillars for cover as much because I do have the overshields from both my throwing ability here that gives me overshields and so does my barricade here. So because of that, I didn't need to specifically play down in these sections and play cover and angles. But if you're on a hunter or if you're on a warlock, you could put your rift down behind one of these pillars and you could play in and out of the cover here while in your healing rift. And if you're a hunter, you could use whatever you have, your dodge, your invis, worm husk, anything that you have to work around these pillars and to do damage to the boss and the trash adds that spawn in as well. Now, if I was to do this again, I would play the corner like I did before, but when the second wave of trash ads goes to spawn, I would just throw my nade on it and I would have my grenade ready so that um, they kept spawning in this area so I could just farm them out easily. And I could also throw some grenades in the middle for all the ones that stacked up in the middle there. Now, after you open this first door after the boss fight with your operator augment, there will be some enemies in this room that you can fight. But once you hit this second one, we're going to run back out to the boss room here. And we're just going to take out all of these shanks that spawn here. So they don't come in close quarters in there and completely annihilate us. Okay, so we have the boss encounter here. We can put down a rally banner if we need it to replenish anything. Now, if we talk about weapons, it's the same kind of discussion that we had earlier, where we want weapons that are good for ad clear. So I'm going to swap out and put on this sniper. So I'm going to run my Osteostriga for ad clear in combination with, you know, the void abilities from my void uh, super subclass for my Titan. And I'm going to continue to rock my grenade launcher with the auto-loading holster. Now, you, for you guys, you guys can kind of decide for yourselves which combinations of weapons you want to use. But the area that we're going to be um, basically camping out in, that we're going to make our home, is a little bit longer range. So you may want to use something like a scout rifle or a sniper rifle or something like that to get easy, consistent boss damage. Okay, so right from the start of the encounter, we're just going to go in here. We're going to run towards the middle where the boss is. We're going to go to the right and jump up top here to where this third little ball is for when you get the suppression augment. Now, a couple of different things that we need to watch out for playing up in this area. The enemies themselves cannot get to this area. There is only one enemy that will spawn here and it's very, very predictable. So we'll have enemies over in these in this area down below here. They do not come up on the catwalk here and attack you. There is a situation where once you get the boss's health down, then two snipers will spawn on this catwalk. So there is one regular sniper vandal, and then there is one sniper vandal who will have the suppressor augment. So we just need to be aware of that. So if you do the fights, you know, once or twice, even if you end up dying, you will get the rotation down here where the enemy spawns in this section here. So you can very easily take them out as they spawn in. And you'll also get the rotation down of the, you know, when the vandals come and how to deal with those. Now, the only other thing that we really have to worry about is that the regular trash enemies, the trash ads, will throw void grenades. So you want to kind of play this middle section here on this orange line. 
but you just want to be aware of the trash ads when they spawn and you'll kind of get a feel for the grenades you may die to them a few times because he'll throw his ice thing and maybe you get hit with a void grenade at the same time but it is fairly fairly simple to get used to like the kind of rotation and you'll be able to see the nades coming and dodge them most of the time now these trash ads that spawn back here periodically we want to take them out because they have a much better um, kind of ability to go through and hit us with void nades now depending on your you know tankiness so your resilience um, the class you're using and all that kind of stuff you might have to clear trash ads periodically or you can clear them more often if you want to but that is completely up to you and whatever you are comfortable with Again, if you do this once or twice, you'll get pretty comfortable with how it works, the ins and outs, and you can kind of make some of your own decisions on what's comfortable for you. Okay, now the boss is getting low so we're going to get ready here for when he puts up his barrier so the boss is getting pretty low here so we're just going to get ready for him to put up his barrier and i'm going to preemptively throw my void nade that will take out the void shield of this chieftain perfect we get some heavy ammo back up here and we see these two guys up top here. So this is one of the vandals that can shoot us and mess us up pretty easily. Again, watch out for the void nades there. So we're going to do our best to take out the, this vandal. Getting a little bit crazy here. And then if we need to, you see we, we just took a sniper shot from this other vandal. So I, he is a pretty high priority because he messes up our whole vibe here. So we can come over here. Oh, he decided to come to this side. I was going to say we can come over there and shoot him when he's on the opposite side. But that was pretty easy. We could see that void nade coming from pretty far away. And now we need to focus these other chieftains. So we're going to take out this middle chieftain from our little perch up here. Because that's very simple. Void nade. We're going to jump across and pick up this suppression ability. Now all the enemies are going to rush us up these stairs. I don't know what just happened to me. All these enemies are going to rush us up these stairs. So we can just be ready for that. They will throw void nades. And we can use uh, whatever we need to against that chieftain. Watch out for the nades. And we're just going to do some ad clear here before we go over to this suppression spot. Now, before you leave, anytime that you do leave your little perch up there, I highly recommend having your utility ready. So whether that's a dodge or something on your hunter and on your warlock it would be your rift on your titan it would be your barricade we go over to this suppression spot here get a couple of shots in we already took out this chieftain so this area is pretty free then we rotate back up to the top to our favorite spot over here and we can go through here and do the damage now we look behind us, there is one of these locations right here where we need to destroy this mine. Easy peasy. Now if you have a long range weapon, you can actually go from these spots kind of up here and you can destroy these things in the middle here. 
So that was one snipe shot, two snipe shots. Let's see how many total it takes for me here. So three snipe shots it took me to destroy that. And if we go up a little bit closer over here, we can see the one from the other side as well. So it took three, so I don't have to run all over the place. Or if you just want to use a closer range weapon, just make sure that you're ad clearing and you're not, you know, just face tanking the boss if he's super close to you. So he's right there. I would start over on the right. Then I would go to the far left. I would kind of drag him with me. And then I can go through and do the front one there when he's not close. So you can see right now that I only have one sniper shot. So I could go around and try to collect some ammo. Or I can just use my rockets here on the boss. And uh, just with my, you know, regular kinetic weapon. And then once I run out of rockets, I can go down and hit that ammo box down there. And I can replenish my rockets and my sniper shots. So you can hear the enemies spawning over here. I'm just going to preemptively throw a nade to take care of those guys because they're super annoying. And you can see that there is a ton of special ammo there now. So I'm just going to drop down quickly, trying not to hit the heavy brick, although I did hit it. And now I have all of my special ammo back and we just go back to doing damage to the boss. Okay, so now we're going to have the enemy spawn up here again. I don't have my grenade, but I do have my void shield that I can throw. And we're going to throw our nade over here for the sniper. And we're going to try to focus on the other sniper here. He's hiding right now. I don't know. Oh, there he is. So we can focus on this guy now and take him out. Now we just need to worry about the void nades. We'll take out the guy behind us here. And we can make our way over to this suppressor. All of the enemies are going to run up the stairs again in this section here. So we just need to make sure that we add clear these enemies. These stairs are the only way that they can get up here. So as long as you have an effective add clear weapon, it shouldn't really matter how many of them rush you. If you need to, you can destroy that thing there. We have a bunch more of them spawning. And I believe... Yeah, we have the Chieftain over to the right. So we're just going to throw a grenade in that area there. Try to hit the Chieftain with our shield bash there. We do have some enemies behind us. So I'm going to come over here quickly and add clear these guys. Because they were chucking nades at me and I don't want that. And now we can focus on this Chieftain over here. And the guys that just spawned at this door. And we can take them all out pretty easily here. Obviously... You have to take out the invulnerability shields if they do pop up. Now, we do need to be aware that we didn't kill this chieftain in the middle here yet. So we're going to throw this nade and see if we can get him with it. Perfect. We're going to take him out. I forgot to get rid of that chieftain before we jump down. Now, my weapon actually doesn't reach from here, so I'm going to have to use a sniper shot. And enemies spawned in behind me there, as you can hear. The audio cues. We use our ad clear weapon here. We don't have to rush. We don't have to do anything crazy. Just clear the ads as we go. We're going to jump down here to the suppressor spot. Smack him up a bit. Get frozen. We're going to jump up top here to the last suppressor spot. Smack him up a bit more. Now we're going to take out these mines. Again, I can do that from the relative safety of being up top here. I don't need to run all the way over. So it's three shots for each one. So we are going to take out these mines. It is three shots for these different sections. It's easier if you jump down in the center section there to actually go through and hit the sniper shots or the scout shots on this one here. But the problem with that is if you do jump down here, obviously you can see it's an easier shot. But just be careful because all of the enemies can come up on the left-hand side stairs. So since I have heavy bricks here, I am just going to throw a couple of heavy shots here over at the enemy. In this section here. And if I need to, I can completely retreat back up top if I get overwhelmed by all of these guys that are going to be rushing me on the stairs. But I'm just going to keep lobbing in heavy shots. Obviously, I'm taking this very, very slow to try to show you guys how controlled you can make this. 
so that it's you know if once you understand how this works and you figure out which weapons work best for you it will actually take you know a lot for them to be able to kill you so we're gonna go through here and clear the big guy that i was talking about earlier over on this side because i saw him on the far side there so we're gonna clear this guy so he doesn't mess up our protection spot up here we are then also going to drop down here and add clear these little guys that spawn because they are too close and I don't like them. And then we're just going to focus on the boss damage again. And we're getting towards the end of the fight here. Don't take it easy. Make sure that you still play exactly how you played the rest of the time so he doesn't get you right at the end. And once you defeat him, then we can move forward here and continue on with the end part of the mission. Now, I tried my best to make the tips and everything and the locations work for literally every types of weapons you guys could want to use or have access to and all of the different supers. But if you have any specific questions or if you're struggling and you can't seem to figure something out with the, uh, the different setups that you're trying to run, then definitely make sure to leave that in the comments and either myself or someone else who's had a similar experience and overcome it or figured something out will comment and give you guys some insight into how you can, you know, make the boss fight a little bit easier for the specific setups that you're trying to run. So anyways, guys, I hope this combat guide was helpful. Leave any recommendations or questions in the comments down below. And I really hope that you guys get your Legend Seraph's Shield completed. Have a great day, everybody.